Hey guys, in my last video, we went into my office in the city and I showed you guys my large format printer, specifically my Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus. I also showed you guys a side table project I was planning as well as how I designed it in Fusion 360. If you'd like to see that video, I'll have a link for you at the end of this one. So in this video, I'm gonna print the actual side table. But as the title suggests, things didn't really go so well. I guess I should have saw this coming because I kind of jinxed myself in the last video. Here, take a look. At least it'll hopefully print and not fail. If it fails, then I have to redo everything over again. So the printing didn't go well. It was actually a disaster. Okay, so this is kind of frustrating. The print had 96.1% to go, and in the middle of the print, as it was going around, it just decided, you see here this hole, it just decided to just lower itself into here and start moving around, and it got stuck, and then the, the head got uh, misaligned. So if I resume the print, it actually tries to think that the center is like somewhere over here, not here. So this print is pretty much failed, unless I try to figure out and calculate exactly how tall this entire print is and go into the G-code and edit it and then um, hopefully have it start uh, relatively close to where it is in the layer. Um, but I did the newbie mistake of just slicing it and sending it to the printer and it, had, it was doing this weird uh, bridging where it wasn't bridging all the way. It was bridging here and coming around. So now you saw like these imperfections here. Um, so that ended up, I think, catching the head and messing around with maybe the settings and caused that dip maybe. But I'm gonna go through the slicer and double check to see what's going on. Um, this printer is great, but I actually really dislike the slicer um, because of I've had issues where it, it just it makes weird, really weird movements and it doesn't pick the most optimized path. So it just really sucks because I was 97% complete, and I might have to just try to salvage that top and use it for something else. That's a drag. So uh, instead of a new side table, what I have now is a, a drum set. Look. It's got a pretty good sound to it. Uh, although I can't drum for crap, so. So I was pretty bummed out and distraught at this point and with the drumming getting a little loopy. So I just went back, remodeled it so it didn't have like this hole at the very top when I made the shell command. I just made it so that it was solid bridging across and I think that was kind of the issue of why it failed. And also this was one roll of filament, just gone, just, you know, like wasted. and. So I, I remodeled it, so I tried to use a little less filament, um, but I started another print and I went home and I had to wait another, you know, 56 hours for it to be finished. And with the Raise printer, um, there is a web client where you could actually watch the print from home and about like 50 hours in again, Disaster struck. It was bad. So at that point, I didn't go back into the office to look at it. So this clip here is actually from a couple of weeks after because I was just so frustrated with it. I just didn't want to go back and just have to see it. So I ended up just using the, the first print 
and salvaging it the best way I could, which was to print a new top for it and try to get where it matched up and then glued on a new top. So what I've been doing is I, I, uh, I sliced uh, the model again and just kind of cut it off at roughly where I thought it would be. And I did a couple of tests. So this one's like slightly too big. And then this one is slightly too small. And then this one is just right. So after I figure, oh wait, this one's a slightly too big one. This one's a little too straight. Yeah, there we go. So um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is print the other half and then I'm gonna sand down the top and then glue it on. Uh, the reason that this has the fill uh, and this one doesn't is because I originally um, redesigned it a little bit. And also on the printer at work, when I printed it the first time, I actually shrunk it down because it didn't fit the printer. But I ended up redesigning everything. So now I'm just going to... Um, so this actually is part of the bottle, but slightly lower down. It doesn't really make sense, but when I glue it, it's just going to be a ring. So I'm going to be gluing it to uh, this this inside part here. So that's gonna be a little tricky. Um, I also think I'm gonna try to uh, fill in the void here. So it's got a, like a solid uh, platform to uh, stick on. So I'm gonna try to fill this in, sand it, prep the surface, have the second piece printed and glue it on. So wish me luck. So uh, since it's been 24 hours since I um, put this wood filler in to fill up the infill area that uh, messed up, I'm going to sand it now to get it really flat. So when I do the glue up, everything will be smooth and hopefully we won't have any gaps. There's a high spot right here where that, um, when it first printed and the nozzle of the 3D printer just like went right in for some reason. So I'm gonna try to bring that down a little bit. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. So I'm using like, a, what is this? 220 grit. And I'm not using a sander because I don't wanna get too aggressive on it. So I'm just using this hand sander here. So once that's done, I'll wipe it off. All right, so I printed a new piece for the top. Look, it feels like a little handle. All right, so hopefully the circumference of this is going to be uh, just like the test piece I did. So moment of truth. Voila. Here we go. There's a little bit of a gap, but the fit is almost perfect. I think I'm like one layer off, but it's not too bad. So when I glue it, I feel like I could compress it down a bit. So now the question is, what kind of glue am I going to use? So before I glue this up, I really want to show you guys the quality of the print. Same filament, but two different printers. So yeah, I wanted to get it to focus. So the top half, this bit, is printed from a Prusa Mark III. And then the bottom is printed on my Rays 3D um, Pro Plus. I forgot what it's called, Pro 2 Plus or whatever. But you could tell like the layer shifting that's happening. It's like, it's slightly off throughout. 
Granted, this is a 0.6 nozzle, so the layer lines are a little bit bigger, but I mean, just look at, like, here's a, a seam. Here we go, that's better. Yeah, you see, you see like the imperfections here? But, and then look how smooth the Mark III is. Yes, they are two completely pr different printers, like, but the chassis is supposed to be really strong on the rays. So it should really be better than this. I'm sure there's some tuning involved and it'd probably be better if I tuned it up, but I mean, it's a $6,000 machine. Shouldn't have this kind of print quality. But what it lacks, it makes up in size. So what I've decided is I'm going to use um, Loctite Super Gel. Um, it's, this is, um, I can't remember what this is called. Um, Cyanoacrylate, but gel form. That's what it is. Um, but I'm going to use Instaset. So usually, you know, um, it's an accelerator. So usually with Loctite, you put it on or super glue, you kind of have to hold it, wait like 30, 40 seconds, and even then it's not super dry. With the accelerator, it speeds up the process and bonds in a couple of seconds, and it's like super dry. But that also means I don't have that much working time. So I gotta make sure I do it right. So here we go. I'm gonna put gel around the edge. The gel is good because it doesn't like leak. So like as I put it on right now, it's not runny. So I'm gonna try to put it closer to the inside edge. Uh-oh, I think I might need another tube. Yep, I need another tube. Luckily, I have two tubes. Gotta do it quick, because it's gonna dry. Now I spray the accelerator on the mating part. Okay. Alright, here we go. The thing you want to be careful with, um, crazy glue or cyanoacrylate or uh, star bond, that's all the same stuff. But on 3D printed parts, it'll actually discolor the plastic. So you want to make sure you try to get it all wiped off really clean. But just like that, it is on there and sealed up. Here we go. Got my side table stand. So the next part is cutting the wooden top. All right.